Hi, today I'll be reviewing this paper, Explainable Reinforcement Learning Through a Causal Lens. This paper is by Prashant Madhumal, Tim Miller, Lynn Sonnenberg, and Frank Wittier. As the title suggests, this paper is about providing explanations to the actions of reinforcement learning agents, which might involve something that has to do with causality or structural causal models. We'll look into what these things are in a bit. So a few of the questions that we can clearly see by looking at the title itself are what is the agent so an agent here is a reinforcement learning agent which is in a model free setting so what are we trying to explain which is the explainable part the explanation is to the query of users who are viewing the rl agents actions the queries can be of two types why this action or why not this action with respect to this paper and lastly, how are we explaining? So the how is the critical part for this paper, which uses causal models to derive causal explanations of the behavior. Among other things, their major contribution is to present an action influence model for RL agents to provide a formalization of the model using SCM or structural causal model. This is basically an extension of structural causal model in which the authors have added actions onto the edges. We'll talk about it later. Their evaluation includes human studies, but for this video, we'll just focus on the main idea of action influence models. We should know about the domain that we are working on before proceeding with any of the methodology. In this work, the authors use a modified version of StarCraft domain, or as they call it, a toned down version of StarCraft 2 domain, which has four actions and nine state variables. So this is this implicit thing that they're saying that in this paper, the state representation is factored. That is, uh, you can see the state be represented as worker number, supply depot number, number of barracks, number of the enemy location, etc. So before we dive into the details of the paper, we can just have a quick look at what SCMs are, that is what structural causal models are. So for this, I'll refer to this paper from ordinary differential equations to structural causal models, the deterministic case by Joris M. Muich et al. So they have a really fun size definition of what SCMs are, at least like to the ones who are new to it. So basically we have a graphical model which represents the SCM where each node is the state variable and is connected to some other nodes. So this is a directed graph and if I'm at node A which has an edge to node B then A is called as the parent of node B. This is simple graph theory, right? So in causal models what this means is that A causes B. That is A has some effect, has some thing to do with B such that you know change in a will bring about a change in b this can be a positive change negative change it doesn't matter there there is a change that happens when something happens to a something else happens to b okay so now we know what the uh, graph looks like so in our domain there are d variables let's suppose there are some number of variables as we talked about that the state itself is factored so there has to be some variables right which represent a state so each of those variables would have one equation attached to it well it can be many equations as we'll see in the extension of action influence models as per the vanilla scm definition let's suppose there is one equation per node now let's suppose that this xpam denotes the parent of those of, of a particular node xi right given by x p m of i now this h function over those parents of node x i gives the value of x i right so the authors in this paper assume that we already have such a graph the task left for us to do is to get an approximation of these h functions as in given the parents of a node Determining the value of that node is the task that we need to solve. This section talks about structural causal models with respect to this paper. So just give it a quick read if you want to know the terminologies used in this paper. So here the authors represent SCM as a tuple S, F 
where s is the signature and f is the function or h that we talked about basically f is the set of all the equations that we need to approximate so s consists of state variables or as they call it signature which is yet another tuple of u v and r we don't really need to get into what u v r are but uh, just for namesake u and v are exo and endogenous variables r is the range of values that these u and v variables can take and f is the equations per variable that gives the variables the, uh, their values so in this work as i said they include the term action in the definition of structural causal model and this extension they call it as action influence model so they do something like this that they extend the tuple of signature and include action in it so earlier s was just u v and r now the signature s a like the new signature is u v r and a a is the set of all actions all possible actions right then they use this s a to create a new tuple which is basically the same formulation as before like scms but now it includes s a instead of s so this new tuple s a comma f gives the action influence model now in comparison to scms the first difference is of course s a is different it includes a right the other difference is with respect to what f is so earlier f was something like this so f of x would be some function h over the parents of x correct now it would in it would look something like f of x dot a where this is a function of h which include parents of x with respect to edge a where a is the action of course this this is given here it will it will get much more clear if we look here in this diagram so let's suppose i'm talking about this node an right so what would an scm equation look like for this particular node so we we'll look at all the unique action edges that are incoming on this particular node so coincidentally there is only one action that gets incident on this particular node which is action am so the function the structural causal equation for this particular node would look something like f sub an which is the state dot am which is the action equals to whatever the parents are when the am edge is taken incident on node an it would be nodes s and b right here and here therefore i can let's suppose train a regression function which takes in the values of s and b and predicts what would be the value of an when the action am is taken so in a brief what is happening is earlier we had this causal model where the edges would not have these actions written on them but now this action influence model includes these actions onto the edges of this causal model right so when we when we write say i'm on state i have this state w and when i take action as this causes the other state variable s so this makes it an action influence model by the definition of the authors in this paper now we can talk about what explanations are so all of what we talked about up till this point was a setup towards the main goal of this paper that is explanation generation so there are three parts to this as given here first is get the action influence model so we have talked about like for the past few minutes about what what action influence model is so we know what what aims are the second part is once we have the action influence model we need to learn the f function that is we know of course we have the graphical model but what about those approximation functions so what i mean is the first requirement that is to get this graph right get these nodes get these edges perfected once you have that we still need function which can take in say the parent 
s and b and give out me this value of a n when this action a m is taken. So these kinds of functions, they are yet to be approximated. So learning the f function or the structural equations during RL is the second part. The authors do so by using a multivariate regression model during the training phase of the RL. They already have the experience replay data if you're using an offline RL algorithm like DQN. So they use this data to train a regression function to finally obtain this f sub x dot a. There is nothing a lot to talk about it because they're just using that data and training a regression function. We can talk about it in the comments if, if somebody is confused. Finally, the third part is to obtain the explanations using the above action influence model and the learnt SCM equations. As I said before, there are two questions that the users can ask. The first is the why question, as in why did you do this action A? The second is the why not question, as in why did you do this action A and not action B? The first question is pretty easy. The first question is answered by providing the users with the information about the intermediate nodes in a causal graph, motivating the selection of the said action A. So in this example, if I say Y action AM here, I can just list out the whole causal graph as in this, 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 and this, and just tell the user because I wanted to achieve the goal, I had to take AM so as to bring about the necessary changes, etc., etc. The more interesting question comes when the user asks the contrastive question as in why not action B? This requires a bit more work. First, we'll deal with how we solve the why question and then we can get on to the why not question. So the why question. In general, the answer to the why question is the causal chain itself from the action edge to the end but that can overwhelm the users because the causal chain can be pretty big and looking at like lots of nodes can overwhelm anybody, like literally overwhelm any lame user. So the authors decided to pick three kinds of nodes within the causal chain to explain to the users. Answer to the why question is a natural template that requires three things. Information about the goal, about the head nodes and the rewards. The goal is conveyed by the reward nodes and their parents, right? These are the two kinds of nodes. The head nodes are the nodes just before the action is taken. So in the causal chain, if I'm talking about action F, then a node just before the action F in the causal graph is called a head node. So head nodes convey short term objective or causes of immediate rewards. So basically, I looked at this immediate reward and I took this action because of this particular head node, right? So what they want to convey is a short term objective and a long term objective in terms of goals and rewards and in terms of heads. They do mention that other heuristics can very well be used to select nodes which best explain the decision to the user, but for their purposes, they have fixed to these, these, these three things. So in equation terms, these are known as XR, the reward nodes, XH, the head nodes, and XI is the intermediate nodes. But as I said, not all the intermediate nodes are required to be shown. So what instead the authors do is replace this XI with this XP, that is the parent of the reward nodes, so as to make the explanations concise. Finally, we can talk about the most interesting part of this paper, the why not question. The why not question entails the need of obtaining a causal chain for the counterfactual action as well. So when the user asks why not action B, this action B is known as a counterfactual action. Now we already have the explanation tuple for the action A as we have seen for the why question. What if we can get the same tuple for action B somehow? Then we can contrast the two tuples, that is the tuple for action A and action B and populate a natural language template, as in say what the differences are and that will constitute as our explanation. This other tuple for the action B is obtained by a contrastive instantiation. To give an idea about what a contrastive instantiation is, let's look at this diagram again. Let's suppose the actual action taken was this AS action. 
and the contrastive action is this AB action. Okay, blue is what was taken by the RL agent and red is the contrastive action asked by the user. Now what we do is we look at the nodes which are predecessor to this action AB that is the contrastive action. We don't even have to look at the actual action, just forget about it. Look at the contrastive action and look at all the nodes which are preceding this particular edge, right? The authors, what they do is instantiate them, the values of these particular nodes as they are in the current setting. So whatever there was in the current setting, just place those values here as it is. Now, what is remaining is to populate these other values as in the successor of these nodes. This is where the SCMs come in. What you need to do is, well, you already have your trained structural causal model equations. You can easily use those equations to obtain the values of these successor nodes. Let's suppose we want to populate this B node. So what we do is, well, we look at the parents of this node, which is only B. So we must would have, so we would have had trained this other function f of b a b which takes in the parameter w and gives out the value of b right so we would use this equation to populate b and so on and so forth for all of these successor nodes so what we so what we would end up getting is this counterfactual instantiation an example of which is given here so let's suppose the actual instantiation looked something like this and as I said, let's suppose AB is that counterfactual action in this example, then a counterfactual instantiation would look something like this. I've highlighted the differences between these two, which is only this S value, which is S equals to one in the actual instantiation and S equals to three in the counterfactual instantiation. Now by definition six of this paper, a minimally complete contrastive explanation is the answer to this contrastive question right so they use this this thing known as difference condition to answer this so basically what this means is that we will take these two causal chains that is the instantiation the actual instantiation and the counterfactual insta instantiation the first we got by using this actual action which was taken by the agent that is as the second is what we got by using our structural causal models and our action AB. Now what we can do is contrast this as in what is the difference between the two. So as we can see the difference is in the first we have S equals to one and in the second we have S equals to three. In addition to both of these things we can also include what the rewards are because we want to include the long term goal in our explanation. Now we, now when we have all of this, we can explain to the user something like this. So when the user asks, why not build barracks? We can answer, well, because it is more desirable to do action build supply depot to have more supply depots as the goal is to have more blah, blah, blah. So what the template looks like is because it is more desirable to do action A, which is my actual action to have more slash less the difference variable as the goal is to have more reward variables. Okay guys, so this is the end of my discussion for this paper. I am skipping out this computational evaluation and human studies part because I think once you read it, it is pretty simple to understand. So I hope you liked it.